accept the prophet of the moment. We welcome her and we receive her. And we believe that you are going to minister to us, O oh God, using her. We thank you and we ask that God, you will bless her and use her and cause us to receive your word for the moment. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Sifiwe. Shina naomba maji ya ndimu. <laughs> and to thank God this morning. I'm born again. I love Jesus Christ. More than anything else. Sing and I'm married to one husband, a mother of four, and a grandmother of one. Amen. Yes, I'm a lady. This has been our lady's week. It has been very powerful. And I know that this week has left an impact in our lives as ladies. Those who came and those we missed will never be the same again. Uh, my prayer is that you may catch up with those who came so that they can give you a tip. Or what happened through the week? When I see fever. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. When I see fever. For you to be remembered, you must do something. When I see fever. You must have a name. You remember holidays. You remember people. But this morning, I want us to talk about a lady who was remembered. She had no name. She had no background. But in one way or the other, positive or negative, she was remembered. And this is in the book of Luke 17. Luke 17, verse number 32. Give me the message Bible. Iyo iko. Remember what happened to Lord's wife. There's no name. But she was, they did what? Jesus quoted these words that remember what happened to Lord's wife. These are words spoken by Jesus Christ when he was talking of his second coming and describing the awful state of many people who would not be able or ready to receive him. It is a solemn thing that Jesus had to speak of Lord's wife. When he thought of those souls who would not be ready for his return. This lady was remembered. And we all know she became a pillar of salt. Because of some consequences. That because of every choice that you make in life, consequences are automatic. And nobody can see your heart apart from the Lord. We all know about her life, what happened in Sodom. But nobody knew what her heart was. Luke 17, 30, 30, 30 says that. Jesus urged his followers to remember Lord's wife. On that day, no one who is on the roof of his house with his goods inside should go down to get them. Likewise, no one in the field should go back for anything. Remember Lord's wife. Whoever tries to keep his life will lose it. And whoever, tries to, to, and whoever loses his life will preserve it. She never preserved her life. She lost her life. You may love at her this morning that if it was me, Ningetoka talk a Sodom. Jesus does not say, do not be like Lord's wife. Do not be like, those are two different things. Remember Lord's wife and do not be like Lord's wife. Jesus said, remember Lord's wife. An experience that had taken place. Let's look at her character this morning. Lord's wife was a prosperous woman who may have been more attached to the good life 
than was good to her. She was so touched to the good life. Good life of where? Do you have a Sodom in your life? Because you are born again. Though there is no indication, she participated in the sin of Sodom. There is no indication. Her story implies she had learned to tolerate the life in Sodom. And that her heart had become divided as a result. One part was in Sodom. The other part was God's. How is your heart this morning? Is your heart divided? Years earlier, she had married Abraham's nephew. Lord, for those who are Juzi, Abraham, the father of nations, had a brother. And the brother had a son. And the son was Lot. So Lot married this lady. This lady without a name. Imagine. And you are a lady this morning. A lady without. And I believe she had a name. It's very unfortunate. So Lot married this lady. Therefore this lady, this Lot's wife, was from the lineage of who? Abraham. And the two had been blessed in the land. Abraham was blessed. Lot was bled, blessed with the land and livestock. In the days of Abraham, true saving religion was cursed. Not like now. You can sit in your house. You can have a, your, your preacher through the tele. Though you don't, who could do isadaka? Cindy, yo. So you can preach as what TV or to isadaka. And you're so comfortable with them. You don't even come for Bible study. Because I'm going TV. Preacher, wako wa nini? We've been here a whole week. Monday through to Friday, ladies. Where were you? Look what you there is no impartation kwa preacher wa TV. There were no Bibles those times. No ministers of religion. No churches. The knowledge of God was confined to a few families. Abraham being one of them. And Lord's wife being in which family? That family. Most of the inhabitants of the world were living in spiritual darkness. Ignorance, superstition, and sin. Compared with them, Lord's wife had great advantage. But she never sees the opportunity. She never took advantage of the family she was married in. Some of us here this morning, you are married in, in pastor's wife's house. In a lineage of godly people. But don't take advantage. She had a godly man for her husband. She had Abraham, the father of the faithful, her uncle by marriage. Lord's wife must be aware of the faith and knowledge and the prayers of these faithful men, Abraham and Lord. She was probably there when Abraham built an altar between I and Bethel. That is Genesis 12, verse 8. For your reference, when Lot was taken prisoner and later rescued by Abraham, when the angels came to Sodom to warn her and her husband to flee, that is Genesis 19. When the angels took the family by their hands in order to bury, to, sorry, in order to hurry them out of the city, Genesis 19. Imagine what a favor that God wants to finish Sodom, and because of His mercies, He remembered there was somebody by the name of Lot, and He sent the angels. Go and rescue Lot and his family. What amazes my heart is that when Lot went to the son-in-laws to be, they said, you are joking. That shows the kind of a life Lot was living. Imagine, father-in-law na muzaha na sons-in-law. Atiyo ni muzaha. And out of those jokes, these sons-in-laws perished in Sodom. In all probability, she conformed outwardly to her husband's religion. Outwardly to her husband's religion. But inwardly, her heart was wrong in the sight of God. This lady, outwardly, she's so submissive. And I think she called her husband master like Sarah because she came from that lineage. But inwardly, her heart was wrong in the sight of God. And I see fear. And I want to search your heart this morning. How is your heart this morning? How is your heart this morning? 
we look on the outside and know how your heart is. We all see on the outside. We judge you on the outside. But how is your heart this morning? She was given over to the love of material things. The mere possession of religious privileges will save no one's soul. And maybe you're in this church. You've been a member so, for so many years because of one thing. Religious privileges. The church will support me. Those are religious privileges. When I lose a loved one, the church will support me. Those are the religious privileges. When I get a baby, the church will support me. When I'm sick, the church will support me. Are you here? Are you here? Because of religious privileges. It's high time just to sort your heart out. Give the Lord first priority in your life. Either you have a church or no. Either you are a member or no. How is your heart with the Lord? Who takes the first priority in your life? Yes, you have money. You just come toward what you have. But how is your intimate to work with God? How is, your, how is your intimate to work with God? Are you here? Because of religious privileges. This may seem a hard truth to those who feel that religious privileges will help them be better Christians. They can never make you a better Christian. What can make you a better Christian is your intimate to work with God. Because the Bible said, God gave a testimony because of Job. That have you seen my servant? Job was wealthy. But he never looked at the previous privileges that he had. And the Lord gave a testimony because of Job. How is your life? When I see fewer. But Lord's wife teaches us that it requires something more than religious privilege to save a soul. Joab was David's captain. Gehazi was Elisha's servant. Demas was Paul's companion. Judas Iscariot was Jesus' disciple. These all died in their sins. It doesn't matter the, the position they are holding. But they all died in their sins. We need something more than privileges. We need the grace of the Holy Spirit. It's good and okay to have them. But let's use them thankfully. They do not do, if they do not do us no good, if they do us no good, they may do us great harm. Remember, the same fire which softens wax, hardens the clay. The same sun, which causes life to flourish in one plant, dries the dead tree. It is the same sun. This morning, I want to give a warning to the young people who have had the privilege of having godly parents. You can never enter the kingdom of God on the credit of your parents' religion. You've been in this church from conception. We don't know when you are conceived. Are we together? You came here for the children dedication. You were carried by your parents. You came to a church. You took a church and over to Pastor Kaunda in the Sunday school. From Pastor Kaunda to the Ovetis, the Gideons. From the Gideons to Pastor Shikuku for the youth. From the youth to the Ablaze. You took a Ablaze, Bishop Anakuja Panakuoza. It's over. When were you born again? Ni musilamu tundi wanazaa musilamu. We give birth to pagans. And if you are here this morning listening to me, you don't know when you are born again. It's better you be born again today. We all celebrate our birthdays. Physical birthdays. What about your spiritual birthday? Do you know when you are born again? Ama uri mkwa kuto miokoka. Religious privileges. Salvation 
It's not an umbrella. One umbrella can cover four people. But salvation is personal. The Bible says, every knee shall bow. And every tongue shall confess that Christ is Lord. My prayer is, you may have that intimate walk with God. Four things revealed from Lord's wife, then I'll be done. Number one, it revealed her true character. It revealed her true character. Little symptoms can be the sign of serious diseases. Unanza na homa, unanza na joto, unenda homa, unenda kwa HIV positive. Matthew 5.28 Matthew 5:28 Huko watu walihama bana sifiwe But don't think you've preserved your virtue simply by say, stay, staying out of bed Your heart can be corrupted by your lust even quicker than your body those daring looks, you think nobody notices, they also corrupt. One look may demonstrate the state of a person's heart. Just one look. Remember Lord's wife. Just one look demonstrated the condition of her heart. Number two, it showed her disobedience. When God speaks plainly by his words in the scripture, our duty is clear to obey. To obey. Number three, it is told of proud unbelief. Kiburi. When anyone thinks they know better than God, their souls are in great danger. She thought she knows more than God because she's out of Sodom. And I think she remembered the chama ya wadada. Aka kumbuka gubato. Na yendi walikuwa napatiwa hiyo mande. Aka kumbuka gombe yake inaza come end of that week. Aka kumbuka kumbuka walikuwa na deni yake. She thought, sasa na yaya mekufa. And she became a pillar of salt. Number four. It revealed a secret love of the materialism of this world. Her eyes turned towards the place where her treasure was. Where is your treasure this morning? Where is your treasure? Lot's wife was not a murderer. Are we together? She's, she's, she was not adulterous. Are we together? Not a thief. But she seemed to be religious. My prayer this morning is to come out to be religious and be a child of God. People says in the book of John, 1 John 1, 10, that he, Jesus came for his own. They received him not. But those that received him, he gave them power and authority to become religious, to become children of God. Friends, my prayer is, you cross over. Come out, to me, come out of being religious and be a child of God. It was a hopeless end to come to. There was no time even for the briefest of prayers. Unasema mimi nitaikula maisha nikikaribia tu kukufa ni okoke. Nobody knows. There was no time even for the briefest prayers. Such was the end of Lord's wife. Are we to ignore the warning of our end? We may laugh this morning because we are living. And because today there is no Sodom. Lord discovered he doesn't have a wife. When he and his children, the girls, they reached Zohar. When they left Sodom, there were four. When they did the city of Zohar, there were only three. And I don't want to prophesy this morning that some of us here, you reach heaven without your wife. Yes, there have been all spouses in heaven. But we all pray that we be seen in, in the, 
will be seen in the heavenly realm with, with, our, with our family. That's our prayer, Sindio. That when the, angel, the, when the saints are marching in, we'll be among the number. But some of us here, our wives, our husbands, our children, our relatives, you reach heaven and find some of them are not there. Because you only saw on the outside, but in the inside, they were attached to our dream materialism. My prayer is that you may seek the Lord with the whole of your heart. That you may love the Lord with all of your mind and your strength. It's better to go to heaven, a poor man, than go to hell, a rich man. It was so unfortunate for Lord. When he reached over, he just, he, he just knew that from today on, I'm a widower. And he was a husband when he was in Sodom. Think also of such people as Korah, Dathan, Abiram, Hophni and Phinehas, Saul, Ahab, Absalom, Belshazzar, Judas Iscariot, Ananias and Sapphira. They were all suddenly destroyed without opportunity of remedy. We are waiting for that opportunity. That when I get married, I'll give my life to Jesus. When I get my firstborn, when I educate my children, because you educate your children with money from corruption. So when I'm done with my children's education, I'm going to get born, I'm going to be born again. These people are destroyed without a remedy, an opportunity of remedy. Let us understand that. The comforting ideas which the Bible gives us of heaven have no real meaning if there's no hell. As much as there is heaven, there is hell. When I see fever, this year of uncommon harvest, it will come and go and you remain the same, depending on the condition of your heart. My prayer is, search your heart. Search your heart, because nobody knows your heart apart from the Lord. I ask you to consider often what your end will be. If today was your end, how will it be? The issues of your heart, the unforgiveness, the grudges, all that you want, fighting for positions. The Lord is saying, seek me first in my kingdom and the rest be added unto you. Will your end be a hopeless one like Lord's wife? Are you secretly loving some sin that you cannot give up? By yourself you can't. But at the level of the cross, at the cross, where you saw the light, where we saw the light, everything is possible. My prayer is, can you come to the cross? There's no other opportunity. There's no other medicine. There's no other physician apart from the cross. How is the condition of your heart? This morning, the Lord is saying, just come, just the way you are. Come. Just the way you are. Come. I'm ready to receive you. Like the prodigal son, when the father saw him from afar, the Bible said that he, the father ran and embraced the son. He told him, welcome home, my son. This morning, the Lord is saying, welcome home. Just the way you are. You are going to stand and sing a song. And the altars are open. Nobody's going to pray for you. Because we don't know how religious you are. Just as I am. The altars are open. If you feel you can hear, come here for an exchange. This is where we exchange our life. The altars are open. Just as I am without one me, but not that was from me, and that I me. Yeah.
where the standing begins. Knowing the Lord, whom to know is life eternal. If you are here, you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. You have to rededicate your life to Jesus. Because along the way, religious privileges took over. Maybe you are here this morning. You don't know when you are born again. Maybe married. Maybe a youth. Maybe a Gideon. A Blaze. You don't know when you are born again. You can make a decision this morning. Because the Lord is here. Are you there? You know yourself. Are you there? Uko hapo, uja okoka. Ngependa kuokoka. Ujuli okoka lini. Yesu yuko hapa asubu ya leo. Nata kukuokoa. If there is none, then the Lord bless you. Bless you, Pastor, for being a vessel to minister to us. If you are there and you still